This is Marketing Jam, a podcast featuring the brightest minds in Canadian marketing. So tell us yeah, uh, your name, company you're with, and your role. Okay, Teresa McLaughlin, and uh, I'm with TD. been with TD close to five years, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer. Amazing. Yeah. So as the Chief Marketing Officer uh, at a bank, uh, I need to ask this question. Sure. What are your favorite apps that you use on your smartphone right oh, now? Oh, terrific. Yeah. So banking apps are non, or it doesn't really just matter? Just ones that, like, maybe you could maybe you can even jump between. What are your, like, apps that you love yep. and just find amazing sure. and apps that you, like, need every day? Okay. Yeah. So I'll give you a couple. Um, yeah. I would. Um, I have to start with a TD one, which yeah. is uh, one of my favorites, which is called TD My Spend. Okay. And so what TD My Spend does is it tracks all of my, go to use my TD credit yeah. card, and yeah. then it tracks how I'm using that and it gives me useful information and alerts to tell me and categorize wow. my spending. So it tells me what do I normally spend on an average basis wow. and then it tracks against uh, am I up or down so that I can control do I want to make this next spend? Mm -hmm. Am I trying to save for something? It mm -hmm. helps with budgeting. Our customers wow. love it. It is one of the most popular apps in Canada in the App Store. Yeah, yeah. and so I uh, use it quite often, okay. uh, every day, yeah. which is terrific. And then flipping to my personal life, I could not live without my Starbucks app, yes, um, yes. and I skip the line and yes. go to the front, and my name is sitting there. I just when someone finally like. I dawned on me that I, I'm like, how are these people skipping the line? Yeah. Can't live without that. Yeah. Um, so I'm an American. Yeah. I have family back in the U.S. Yeah. and I use Facebook to keep in touch yeah. with my growing nieces and nephews yeah. and keep an eye on what's going on with them. I have fallen in love with my Google suite of products. So particularly yeah. my Google Assistant yeah. that I can tell them add something to my grocery yeah. list or what does my day look like yeah. I think you know it's really indicative I think of what the world around us yeah. is going through is yeah. how do we make these things interface with our lives to use your words yeah. things you just can't live without yeah and do you have a Google Home yet? I do. Okay. Yeah, it's fantastic. Okay. You know, I have to say, I spent quite a bit of time saying, tell me a joke, which yes. is what everybody does. Yes. And then you immediately start to realize they're much more useful than that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I'm using it on a regular basis. Okay. Recipes, yeah. the weather, yeah. uh, what the stock market is doing, etc. Yeah. My four-year-old daughter oh. discovered that she could ask it to play Lightning and the Thunder by Imagine Dragons. And uh, the day I took the Google Home back to work, she <laughs> missed her friend that would play her these songs for her. Yeah. Yes, that's fabulous. Yeah, yeah. they start them young. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking about the TD banking app, yeah, um, I use an app called Mint. Yeah, so because I'm, I'm not at TD. So would it be something similar to that, but but actually native to the the TD? I'm still paused that we're, that you're not a TD customer. What I do I, what do I need to do to get you to be a TD customer? This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Always a marketer. It's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so Mint is terrific in that it takes information from different sites and brings yeah. it together and it aggregates it so that you have a useful place to look at things. Yeah. I think what Mint doesn't do that the TD My Spend app does do, yeah. it gives you, it uses machine learning to get to a place where we're providing you insights around your own spending, yeah. right? So that you can use it as a tool to say, do I feel good or bad about the fact that I'm, you know, above my average, below yeah. my average? Do I understand and, uh, you know, um, and, and have a regular understanding of where my money is going yeah. and that's what consumers are saying to yeah. us is that they're looking for tools to help them be more confident yeah. in their spending yeah. and they love it yeah mint changed my wife and I's life like did we, it really we, we have a common uh, talking point to talk about budgets we have a common place to monitor where our it all budgets comes together it kind of gamifies it at the end of the month yeah. we see where we've saved and yeah. where we went over maybe yeah the frustrating thing is that with mint it, it's an American tool that is. is constantly telling me these American like, ads American ads for American credit cards Nothing against that, I just don't need them. And yeah. it doesn't recognize some of my Canadian um, uh, financial so, institutions. So, as I said, you need to become a TV customer. Yeah. And I can do all those things and we don't, we won't bother you with all the yeah, advertising yeah. and it'll provide you with useful information. Yeah. So. No, it's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of, Good. That, of that, that tool. Yeah, excellent. So we're here in March already in 2018. No, crazy. I know, it's gone really fast. It's almost Easter. And uh, the rest of the year, we're, we're looking forward here. And, and some of the speakers here at DX3 have been looking into crystal balls and talking about the future. But I'd love to hear from you. What do you think 2018 looks like for marketing mm -hmm. and, and from your perspective? Well, you know, there's an interesting stat um, that I had heard around there'll be more change in the next five years than there has been in the last 100. Wow. And I think we are in the middle of a, an, of a revolution, not 
on okay. an evolution in terms of digital, oh, right? Wow. Everything you and I just talked about, the fact that you get up and check your phone, most people go to bed, their phone is right there on their yes. nightstand, they can't live without it. So it ha you have to start with a mobile first, mm -hmm. digital first, seamless connected mindset. And I think that's a uh, change in mindset yeah. for especially legacy companies um, that have uh, you know been around for a really long time and have to transform themselves. The good news, I mean, the company I work for has a history of transforming itself, hmm. being ready for the future, which yeah. is our tagline. And so we're in the middle of doing that as well, right? How do we become, um, how do we make sure we stay connected with our consumers in a digital world? What does that look like? Where, you know, in, in historically people would come into our stores and talk to us face to face, yeah. and that's what the bank meant yeah. to them. Now they're, they're now the uh, journey that our customers are on is that they're using tools and devices, whether it's iPads or mobile apps, yeah. etc., alerts yeah. to stay connected and engaged with their money. But then, when moments that really matter, let's say a mortgage, yeah. they want to talk to somebody. Yeah, it's how do we connect the online and the offline to make those experiences relevant. Yeah. So I think the long answer to your question is that for 2018, you'll hear me talk about this in my speech later today, is that it's about creating those personal connected experiences for mm. consumers, right? You, you described mm. your experience with Mint. That's mm. very personal. Yeah, very. It's using the connection online and offline, oh, yeah. and you're finding it very useful. Yeah. That is the standard. It's not being set by banks anymore. It's being set by, you started by asking me about apps that are yeah. useful. Yeah. That's the standard that consumers are looking for. How yeah. do we do that as a bank? Yeah. And that's where we're spending a tremendous amount of our time. Okay, that's, that's incredible. When you look ahead, um, what are some maybe some companies or brands that you look to that are, that are ones that we should be watching or ones that you're watching? So I think there's the ones that you would expect, but the one I'm watching right now is Amazon. Uh, so there was an announcement just two days ago where they're talking about getting into the checking account business. Yeah. That's pretty transformational for us, right? Yeah. If you look at somebody, Amazon getting into anything is yeah. transformational, yeah. right? So recently they have done partnerships where they, in the U.S., talk about getting into healthcare, wow. and basically coming out and saying with Chase and others yeah. that healthcare is too expensive, and we think we can figure out a smarter way. Wow. I think, but. Amazon puts their mind to it. They, yeah. you know, they bought Whole Foods. Yeah. They're transforming different yeah. industries, yeah. and so I think they're a smart competitor mm. to watch. And when you think about those personalized experiences, don't you find Amazon to be personalized to you when oh. you get on there and you order something, and then the next time you look at your order and oh. it's, you say, "Wow, how did they know that yeah. I would like that?" Well, my wife just found out that I was looking at a bunch of Zelda characters and figurines, and she was wondering what I was doing, and I was like, "You can't hide anything." Yeah, you yeah. Can't, no, you can't hide. Yeah. <laughs> So they're a terrific one to watch. But then, you know, I would tell you, um, and it may sound old school, but I also follow traditional companies that have a really long history of providing great customer experiences. Okay. And Risk Carlton's a great example of that. Okay. I went out and spent time with them yeah. and looked at their experience model, mm -hmm. and it's a people-based business, and it's stood the test of time. Yeah. Sometimes it's not, even though we are living in a digital yeah. world, sometimes personal really matters. Yeah. Human really, really matters. Yeah. And I think uh, what's great about that, I mean, their turnover rate is less than 10% wow. in a retail industry yeah. where turnover is 40 and 50%. Yeah. So I think you have to um, stay open to all kinds of companies. Okay. And, and when you, uh, you know, you're, you're at the helm, the marketing officer mm -hmm. for, for TD, yep. a, a large organization, yeah. it's like a, a large ship. It is. But, but when you're able to move and what you're seeing right now, what are the most things that you're most excited about this year? What are the things that you're like, we're going to try this this year. We're, we're going to try to do this little test. What's something maybe that we might be able to see as consumers this year coming mm -hmm. down the pipe? I would say going back to that personalized, connected experiences, yeah. you're going to see more and more things like TD MySpend that I yeah. talked to you yeah. about. Um, TD for me, where basically, you know, an app that um, takes the whole bank and customizes yeah. it for you. So when you go through Union Station and you're yeah. looking for uh, your train, yeah. this app gives you the ability to tell you and give you alerts right within the context of all your other banking. So that you don't have to sort of search around on your phone. It yeah. creates, using geo-targeting, the ability for us to provide relevant material wow. to you okay. um, that's that's useful. Yeah. So I think that's where brands need to go, is engaging with consumers on yeah. content, okay. not selling them things. Okay. And so you're going to see TD do more and more where we create those digital experiences okay. that provide usefulness. Yeah. You know, you started this whole conversation yeah. by asking me, what do I, what can't I live without? Yeah. We want to continue to do that. 
that great tools that consumers cool. just can't live without yeah. to help them not just with their banking but their whole life. And hopefully that will cause them to switch over so your TD customers become your advocates That's true. and your, your marketers. Yeah, or, or grow their relationships with us, yeah. etc. Yes. Okay. And then to gather new customers and to get new people interested in TD, what are some of the uh, kind of tactics or strategies that you're looking at? Like whether it's CSR or... Yeah, so CSR is a good one. I was just going to actually mention that one. I think um, when you look at, for example, millennials, we know they care a lot about brands with purpose yeah. and TD is a purpose-driven brand. We mm -hmm. give away a lot of money in the community and what yeah. we're spending a lot of time now talking about is how do we make that really matter? Yeah. How do we make sure that wherever we give, yeah. we're not just giving money, but we're helping somebody prosper mm -hmm. and we're helping, we're putting our uh, emphasis on things that our customers really care about. Yeah. So we're spending a tremendous amount of time across all the communities. We, uh, we have over 85,000 colleagues, uh, people probably don't know that, uh, across uh, North America wow. alone yeah. um, in uh, over 2,500 branches yeah. and stores. Yeah. And so we need to be a part of the communities where yeah. we live and work. And so CSR is hugely important in yeah. terms of telling that story and having people feel like we are a part of their vibrant community yeah. and helping them be ready for the future. That's cool. Yeah. We did an experiment this last Christmas time at our office on a much smaller scale where instead of giving a check to one charity, we use a tool called Chimp. Net, yes, and we and we dispersed the donation we would have given to all of our employees, oh, and then that. they chose which charity to give. I love to. that. We got the tax receipt, which is what we you know everyone wants. We made a donation. I love but, it. But our employees chose where it went. Love it. Yeah, the tool doesn't yet. It didn't have the technology to tell me kind of the breakdown of are my staff more interested in animals, people, religion, or you know the water or whatever. I would love that little infographic yeah, at the end, yeah. but but the um, distribution model is amazing. Do you t your team must have loved it. I don't know, did you like it, Sheed? Yeah, he liked it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Cool. Yeah, I, I, so it, Chim, it was just an interesting model yeah. of saying distributing control. Yeah. But is that scary in some ways? Like, you don't mm. control where it goes, because who knows, when you crowdsource information, mm. or you crowdsource where things go, mm -hmm. is risk involved. I think you're uh, dead on about that, and I yeah. think, uh, you know, banks uh, are protecting people's money. Yeah. Trust matters yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we have an obligation to make sure that we are really watching and being careful about using people's information, yeah. their data, protecting them. Yeah. As more and more of our customers go online, protecting mm -hmm. them from an identity perspective, yeah. etc. And so we take that incredibly seriously. Yeah. But at the same time, your point about um, taking some risks, right? And getting up, using social, for example, yeah. using uh, people like me, giving people mm -hmm. the ability to rate products and mm -hmm. reviews. Social media alone, you can't control the narrative. No, no. Brands are no longer about what we tell customers. Yeah. It's about what they say about us. Yeah. And so TD has really come a long way in terms mm. of, uh, they certainly understand that. And that's something that we, uh, as we think about our social strategy, yeah. engaging with our customers the way they want to engage yeah. versus us telling them. That's really cool. Yeah, makes sense. So um, people listening to the show, watching the show, um, you know, they're wondering, how did you get to this position and how can I be in that seat? Not your specific seat yeah. one day, they're not going to take your job from you, but you know, <laughs> how can they you know, rise in the ranks of becoming a CMO of a, a large, you know, multinational mm -hmm. bank? Yeah. yeah, I would say a couple of things. Um, first of all, is the world is changing in terms of the linear approach that mm. I took to get to mm. where I'm at, right? Mm. You rise up in mm. your job and then you take the next mm. level of responsibility. I've had a number of different roles in mm. companies from running P&Ls yeah. to working in distribution to working yeah. in marketing. All of those made me a better marketer mm. because I rounded my experiences yeah. out. I find sometimes that people are too aggressive in saying I want to be a VP yeah. rather than saying I want to get this experience I haven't had before. Yeah. Put me in a place yeah. where I don't know anything about the topic, yeah. technology, yeah. data. Yeah. Um, I don't know anything about it, but I'm going to go spend two years yeah. there and forget my title, forget mm -hmm. whether I have people reporting to me, yeah. whether I even have an office yeah. or a space to sit. I'm going to learn and grow that's because cool. that's part of the future. Mm. Um, that's what I think is most important, mm. is being curious and being open mm. to growing yourself uh, in different ways. Okay. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk about you know women in different industries, mm -hmm. like the movie industry, and, and, and a lot of mm -hmm. talk in the media about that. I'd love for you to talk about women in marketing mm -hmm. and, and their unique um, you know strengths. I feel they bring to the, the table, and especially in PR and marketing mm -hmm. worlds. And, and what are you seeing the women's role in marketing is, and 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 and, and kind of some hope that you speak for women and, and, and mm. maybe encouraging other women to join the world of marketing. Yeah, PR. so you know, TD in particular spends quite a bit of time thinking about diversity and inclusion. Yeah. And inclusion is a place where you think about um, uh, 
does everyone, regardless of your gender, uh, your race, your sexuality, mm -hmm. your thinking, your yeah. age, um, are you included? And yeah. do you feel like you can contribute? So to yeah. me, it's less about women in particular, yeah. and it's more about making sure that we have an inclusive culture. Yeah. Um, women in leadership is definitely a place that we spend a lot of time making sure that women feel that they have a voice yeah. and that they can uh, have an arm around them to help them take the next step. Because I think sometimes women feel like they have to have all the answers before they take the next job. Yeah. Um, and so like the Sheryl Sandberg book about lean in, lots of good tips in there that I remember when I read it for the first time, I thought, I wish someone had told me that when I was in my 20s, okay. right? And so I view it as an absolute obligation as a senior woman to help open the door yeah. and hold the door yeah. for the person behind me okay. and help them come up. So I spend a tremendous amount of time, a part of it's the culture of the company yeah. I work for, um, but really mentoring and giving mm. uh, giving an arm around and helping people feel confident. Okay. How could a young um, person in marketing find a mentor? What does that look like? Yeah, it's a great question. I think that the, you know, the old model of um, me knocking on your door and expecting that I'm going to meet with you every two weeks yeah. and take, take, take is not the right way. I think there are natural connections that you can find through through projects that you're working on, etc., yeah. um, and you can just uh, make those connections and say, "Hey, can we have a coffee?" Mm -hmm. And again, I work for a company where I drink a lot of caffeine. Yeah. We have a lot of coffees yeah. um, to get people to sit down and just say, "Hey, let me help you understand, uh, you know, what you need to do to get to the next level." I'd say the most important thing about that, though, is being open to feedback. Yeah. Not everybody is open to feedback. Uh -huh. okay. Sometimes your aspirations as to where you want to go versus what your skill sets yeah. are, there's a mis mismatch. Yeah. So you have to be open to figuring out what you need to do. To take those left and right turns to get there. And speaking of mentoring, uh, some people find mentors through books. Um, yeah. Is there any books that you recommend or, or blogs or publications, magazines? Yeah. So I think what's most important today is that you remain curious and that you look at things outside your comfort zone. Okay. So I actually had other people help me populate my Twitter feed okay. to make sure that I am not looking at things that I would be comfortable yeah. with. Yeah. And so I follow all kinds of different mm -hmm. sites and publications. Mm -hmm. When I hear a great speaker, I always mm -hmm. ask them, who do you follow? Yeah. And then I start following. Yeah. And in the morning you can get a lot of different clips on mm. different topics yeah. uh, from traditional places like Gartner that's yeah. telling you what's happening to yeah. you know to non-traditional sites and, yeah. and followers. I mean look at YouTube alone. Yeah. Um, even Google, um, I get regular newsletters from Google on what mm. are what are my customers searching for? Because yeah. if I understand what they're searching for, yeah. I understand how they're thinking. Yeah. And so just even following analytics from some yeah. of my partners is something I spend a bit of time in the morning with a coffee yeah. doing. No, it's fascinating. Google Trends telling yeah. us what, you know, and even misspellings of what people are searching totally. for. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you mentioned a great book by Sheryl Sandberg. Yes. Is there other books that you think that are kind of must reads? Or so I finished one recently. I don't think I have the name quite right, but yeah. it's a, the gist of it is is the future twenty uh, first century companies, okay. and it just talked about how the world is changing dramatically in every single industry. I went to Singularity yeah. University recently here in Toronto, and you know you take a step back and you think about ro what robotics and machine learning, how that's going to change everything oh, yeah. from medicine to it already has yeah. right the Ubers of the world, the transportation yeah. industry. Every industry is going through that level of transformation, but when you take a giant step back and you read a book that's looking at how these trends are being applied yeah. across industries, yeah. you realize what an incredibly exciting time we're living in yeah. right now. And as a marketer, you know that connection you're making with consumers is is a really noble and important yeah. one, and you've got to apply science and data and technology to sort of be a future-oriented marketer. So that was a good one, that book. Yeah. And do you follow any podcasts? I follow again a variety of them. Yeah. TEDx is actually one of my okay. favorites. Yeah. So I get on a treadmill in the morning, yeah. and it makes, to be honest, it makes the hour go by. Yeah. <laughs> but you can really open your mind to just a variety of different yeah. topics. And what I love about that, or um, uh, NPR has a has a has a great program. It's just I really like listening to real people talk yeah. about real experiences. Okay. Yeah. I think it's very easy, particularly in marketing, to read data yeah. and not really know human stories yeah. in their own terms. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones that I find most interesting. Okay. And, and what are your thoughts on like uh, the fintech stuff that's coming up? Because it sounds like you guys yourselves are a fintech. Like you are a well, finet, you're, you're building new tech, you're trying new things? Yeah, I wouldn't call this a fintech, but we are partnering with fintechs. Pro okay. uh, you know, there was a time where I think people were trying to think through the role that fintech played yeah. with uh, large organizations yeah. like mine. Uh, we're now part, we just uh, acquired a company called Layer 6, which okay. is a machine uh, learning and AI company, okay. and we're working with them to do some really progressive things. So okay. I think for us, it's about how do we partner uh, yeah. with uh, fintechs to take okay. it to the next level. That's awesome. And it's kind of the best of both worlds. It is, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's amazing. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to leave with our listeners? 
Yeah. No, I, I'm excited to be here. Really uh, yeah. terrific to uh, opportunity to uh, uh, spend some time. In to my topic today, I'm going to be talking about marketing talent, okay. which is everything. That's really all a company is and how you develop that talent and take it to the next level. And so uh, I'm very fortunate to work for an organization that puts talent first. That's amazing. Any, any little snippets that you leave with people about developing talent? Any kind of little the only thing I would say to you is that uh, even just in thinking about going to companies, the yeah. best piece of advice I was given was don't join a job, join a company. Hmm. Really think through what that company is, look at the track hmm. record. And so I know the people at the company I work with have had multiple careers because they move yeah. them around and yeah. they say great leaders yeah. can learn. Yeah. And so they match them with subject matter experts. So if you can get into an organization that's willing to bet on you and put you in different places yeah. and get you completely out of your comfort zone hmm. early in your career, yeah. That's hugely important, but mm. I see people falling in love with a title or a particular yeah. job. And I would just say think through what's a brand you want to be associated with. Hmm. That's really good advice. Yeah. Thanks for being on the yeah, marketing show. Yeah, thank you very show. much. Yeah, it's terrific. Your time, okay. And we hope that the rest of the day goes great for you. Terrific. Thank you again. <laughs>